we've been on this epic adventure for the last eight years now and we've seen some incredible things we've seen some impossible ideas become a reality but our team sit on the edge of what is our biggest product launch ever and we are excited and we are nervous nervous because people in the industry that we're about to launch in are talking about how impossible it is there's global competitors that have tried launching this exact product in Australia and it hasn't worked. People are saying the competition's tough. And then there are others that think, no, 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 we can pull this off. At Thank You, we're obviously part of that group. But for you to believe with us, you need to know where we came from. You need to know where this began. Deep down, I reckon every person wants to make a difference. Maybe we'd all like to change something, but how do we do it? How do we tap into the little part of everyone that wants to change the world and, and do it in a way that's really simple, that we can all be part of this? Yeah, I remember this moment where I was sitting at my computer and I'm watching stories of kids who are spending you know, half a day walking to collect water for their family. And reading stats like, you know, four and a half thousand kids dying every day from waterborne disease or hundreds of millions of people without water. And I'm having this moment where I'm realizing I'm watching other kids' stories and imagine if that was my story. Yeah, my sisters, Jess and Mel, they're twins, they're younger. And I thought, imagine like collecting water for them every day as like a, as the brother in the family. And imagine finding out they died one day from waterborne disease. I felt so helpless sitting at my computer. I remember reading about how much we spent on bottled water. Uh, in Australia, it was 600 million, globally $50 billion at the time. And I'm like, what? That's crazy. Bottled water is such a dumb product. Gosh, imagine if we could launch a brand of water and turn this kind of dumb product into something more powerful, getting water to people who need it. This thought that maybe together we could do something remarkable. I remember we were sitting around trying to figure out, so how do we be a business? How do we be professional and do all this sort of stuff? What have we got to do? We just Googled how to start a bottled water company. You're like, you need, you need hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I remember looking at him going, are you not even worried we do not have this? And he just didn't seem phased at all. Like he was like, you know, if this is what we're meant to do, the money's gonna come. Maybe it was a bit naive, but we started booking meetings with some of the biggest bottling plants in the country. As we drive in the car park, we, we take the pee plates down in the car so we didn't look too young. I uh, never really shared the idea with any of them. We just kept the, our cards really close to our chest. The confidential was just more to hide the fact we didn't know what we're doing. We had a certain naivety uh, about us, which really worked in our favour because we could be bold and we could ask for things which, you know, a more seasoned businessman probably wouldn't. So three people just shooting for the stars and it was so infectious that you wanted to help them. Um, we were out there knocking on the cafe doors at, at seven, eight o'clock in the morning, just, just pleading with people, please take our water. Uh, it'll change the world. People are spending this money anyway and I want people to be inspired that, that now they're part of something bigger and uh, together we could solve some of the world's most complex problems. We ended up getting to a point where we got 350 stores right across the country. You know, the launch ended up being a product recall. And uh, when we relaunched the brand, we ended up having a factory kind of disappoint us. And we didn't receive any water for, I think, about six weeks. So all these cafes and people we, we got on board quickly kept on saying to us, you know, you guys are just kids. And, and at one point, one year in, we lost 300 of our, our 350 customers. Everyone said the same thing. Hey, cool guys, we, we love your passion, but it's, it's, you don't really have what it takes the two, three, four, five million dollars that other brands will have. And we're talking about a consumer movement that just sounds like um, kind of unrealistic. 
On top of that, we also had a few deals that we're working on with a few retailers. They came back to us after three months or six months and said to us, we're not going ahead, we thank you. And that was another kick in the gut. Lots of rejection, lots of, why isn't anyone getting on board? We thought this was a great idea. You know, when, when you start out with an idea and change the world and, and you just think everyone else will get it, but they didn't. But at the same time, I felt like people did get it. I talked to friends, family, just pe people loved the concept. And people want to do something and change something, they just don't really know how. So for what we've done, we, we've created this vehicle. Its name is Thank You. I think gratitude is the most important thing we as humans can have. It gives us this perspective that we're blessed. Every statistic, every number is a person. They have a story. And I just think of the stories. That's what, what keeps me going. Well, we never had enough money to justify going and seeing our projects ourselves. So I think we were about three years in by this point. We had the opportunity to go and see them for the first time and I just did not really fully comprehend the impact that it was making across the board. Instead of spending all their money on medical expenses due to the waterborne diseases, they had the ability to go to school, to be able to have an education, to be able to equip them for their future, for them to be able to dream about what they want to do when they grow up. You know, the statistics that we go, oh, we've helped, you know, this many thousand people, whatever, it's put real names to it. These are real people's lives. These are real people that deserve our every energy that we can put into it. Sorry. Making a difference for someone's life has a massive impact on anybody. And if you can make someone's life turn out something completely different than what it was for the better, I think that's just such an awesome feeling to be able to know that that was you that did that. I love that thought that now we can all do something. Thank You is a story of real people all around the world in, in, in every different position saying yes to an idea, a simple idea. I think the, the, the consumer power is remarkable. He taps in to an incredibly powerful generation. They're a whole lot more community-minded, a whole lot more globally oriented. When you have a variety of choices, it's just kind of something that comes over me to just grab a thank you product. It's something that really helps other people, not just myself. I'm like, wow, it's awesome. You know, there's people out there, and we knew we could engage them again in, in totally different ranges. The challenges are how do you scale up without big investment, without almost going back on the cause and the reason you started this. We're excited, I mean, we think that's the opportunity. What if there was a way to, to kind of hack the system, to find another way to scale this idea? We launched this campaign, it was really crazy at the time, we called it the 7-Eleven campaign and we launched a video on YouTube asking supporters to jump onto the 7-Eleven Facebook wall. We've got to flip this around and flip our approach around, so we thought, can we get people to tell them that if they stocked it, they would buy it, as simple as that, because that's all they're really after. That was the first I heard of it, and that our Facebook page had crashed, and <laughs> just to get your attention, and now we've got your attention, we've got something really important we want to talk about. It wasn't just a usual presentation, there was no data, there was no research. It's quite refreshing, as in that position where you kind of get the same people coming in, doing the same thing all the time, and getting three really young people just coming in, giving it their all. I remember going back home that night and said, I, I want to work for a company like that someday. Yeah, they basically rolled the product out as quick as they could. It went from like this dark to light because I'm thinking there is hope and so we built on that. And then he said, we're going to take on Coles and Woolies. And you just shook your head and you thought, Daniel, Daniel, Daniel. You've got this far, you've proved the critics wrong. But it was about really changing the game. They were launching body care products and food. I think every next step for thank you needs to make sense. I mean, the body care range was to fund health, hygiene and sanitation programs. The food range, 
to fund local food programs here in Melbourne through to global food aid and food development programs. The definition of the brand is not about what we make, but what we stand for, helping the world. It was a call to action. We asked people to upload videos on Coles and Woolies Facebook page. And I remember as soon as the sunrise feature finished, I heard screaming going on downstairs and there was just hundreds of posts just happening. Guys, I flew helicopters for free above the head offices of Coles and Woolies with these giant banners and everyone came together. We were able to go in there and pitch a commercial deal. You see, everything that we'd learned over the past, they sat back and said, this is brilliant. They took on an industry where it was so saturated and they wanted to do good and they have the most phenomenal story. They've stood the test of time, they've broken through the barriers and they're just as enthusiastic as ever. This idea sometimes seems so complex, but it's actually so simple. It, it literally just needs people to say yes. It's awesome to see how it's become a part of people's everyday lives. That they still have the opportunity to be able to save someone's life. That shift of power, thank you, have imagined, moved into the space, really occupied that space to transform lives. What we've been able to do and the results that we've been able to achieve have left industry experts speechless. We go from helping the 56,000 people who got access to safe water to now hundreds of thousands of people getting access to water, food, health, sanitation, over $3.3 million raised because people said yes. We know that every time we can exponentially grow, thank you, the impact exponentially grows. And because of that reason, because we exist 100% for impact, we will put everything on the line. We will step out. We will do what some people say is impossible. And you know, in the lead up to this launch, well, a lot of people have said a lot of things. But what if they did say yes? What, and, and I love that, and maybe it's naive, maybe it's boldness, I'm not sure, because when it does work, the answer to that is we literally go on to change what is now hundreds of thousands into millions of people with access to basic human rights. And we just invite people to come on that journey. And yeah, it's scary, very nerve wracking. It's just like the first chapter of, of the journey. I can't wait to see what the future looks like. We knew from travelling in developing countries that maternal and infant health uh, is so crucial. The statistics say that, you know, every 90 seconds a mum dies in childbirth and 2.9 million babies die within their first month. And, and I think a lot of us switch off when we hear those numbers. It's like, ah, it's too big. But just think about it for a moment. The stats also say 99% of, of these deaths are in developing countries. So many times I looked around and went, how on earth do women get to a hospital here? They were carried by stretcher to be able to get to a hospital. And so you could see how it would be so easy for women to give birth on the side of the road and not make it in time. And no wonder mums die, no wonder kids die. Because they're giving birth in their home. They've got no one around them. They've got no skilled birth attendant. They've got no technical support. And when I say they delivered at home, it's not like some cozy bed in a corner with loving, caring people around them. It's often on a dirt floor, and if they're lucky enough to have a piece of plastic. it must be so terrifying and I have the deepest respect for every single woman that chooses to get pregnant because actually 
they risk dying to give birth. And we don't think about that very often, and it's true. They're, they're overwhelming statistics, but for me, if I put a name like Jed or Justine in my mind next to either of those two st statistics, I think th this can't happen. We cannot let this happen. You've got to remember, like, every mother wants the same thing. You know, every mother wants their child to grow up, to make something great of themselves and, and hopefully leave the world a better place than they, they entered it. I th just and I, I mean, we've just come through this whole birth process and we've you know, got a, a happy little son and we're loving life, but it, it was, it was full on. You know, it was scary, it was exciting. You really can't prepare enough for what birth really is. You know, for us, we have a moment where it was touch and go, and you know, we're lucky that we're, we, we're in a world where there's a button that's pressed and in, in rush a whole bunch of really skilled people and, and machines and everything for us ended okay. But I think for Justine and I, we walked away from a, a pretty full on experience, realizing that if we didn't have that support there, we could have lost uh, our son Jet, or I could have lost, you know, my best mate Justine. I've just become a father. It was full on, just sitting there so helpless. Just had no idea what, what could I do, my wife. So they have these monitors on Jess's stomach to just track the baby's heart rate. And all of a sudden the heart rate started to drop. All of a sudden these alarms start going off and we're like, what the heck is going on? And it, it turned out to be quite a simple fix. All they had to do was you know, pump some more fluid into Jess and um, a really easy fix when you have the technology available and the, the skilled attendants there. It all worked out perfectly well. Oh, we've got a very healthy young girl, a very cheeky young girl. And we're so lucky we get to experience that joy because so many people miss out. The technology that we have these days, even the real basic stuff, there should be no reason why this is happening. We've grown up a lot at Thank You. But what hasn't changed is this one simple idea. We can take the money we're already spending and we can use that to truly impact millions of lives. So the Thank You Baby range exists 100% to fund maternal and child health programs. I love doing numbers and, and I was being on the calculator doing some numbers like, what if 5,000 families back this? Each family will spend around $3,000 on baby wipes and body care products and nappies for each child they have. And I look at those numbers and I think, you know what, all of a sudden extreme poverty, all of a sudden these huge numbers start to look a bit smaller when we combine the little bit that you have, the little bit that I have, and together we solve a problem that should not exist in our world. It begins with an idea, and then someone brings up the relevant topic, hey, uh, we're going to need some money to do this. So what we did is we launched Chapter One. Chapter One was a book that's been written by Daniel himself. And in this book is the first chapter of the thank you story. It's everything and anything we've learned about making ideas and dreams a reality, and we wrote it for other people. Instantly we had social media going crazy of people tagging themselves, buying the book and the excitement from the community was incredible. It wasn't just now that we have the money, which is handy, but there are tens of thousands of people backing this baby launch. And yeah, we're about to take on the impossible. We're about to do things that some people don't think Thank You has the ability to pull off, but I think we do. Not because of the brand thank you, but because of the movement of people behind it. You go into the thank you offices in Melbourne 
The energy in the place is unbelievable. We worked for over a year with our suppliers, as well as an innovation group. They were taking home samples and seeing whether they worked or didn't work for them. We actually had to look externally, right around the world for great innovation. With some products coming from New York, through to great ethically sourced product from China. Making sure that these products are uh, ethically sourced is super important to us. We've loaded the nappies with uh, vitamin E and aloe vera. The mothers are really happy. They work, they absorb, they contain, they look cool. The baby body care range, the washes and shampoos and lotions, they're free of chemicals and nasties. It's good for the baby. In fact, I was sitting in this one meeting as we're presenting the range and this slide came up that compared the thank you products with what else was on the market. I sat in that room seeing all the ticks on the thank you products going, I am so proud to put that on, on, on my son. And as exciting and big as this all is, a nappy on its own won't change the world. A baby bath wash won't change the world, but a community of like-minded mums and dads will. In my day-to-day -day life with little kids, I wish I could do more, but at least I can know I'm buying products that are creating a better outcome for other people. Thank you's actually allowing us to know what the inequities are, but they're providing a bridge for us to be able to help. I mean, who wouldn't want to do that? Who would not want to be a part of something so big? One of the things I loved seeing about the first programs that we're funding is just the overall holistic approach that's been taken. One Heart, who are one of our first partners in maternal and child health, have an incredible model. They call it the network of safety model. What they set up is skilled birth attendants to visit uh, mums rurally, visit mums who are more remote, see where they're at in their pregnancy. They're seeing incredible change just from small investment. You know, one of the, the communities we visited in Nepal in the last two years have had no maternal deaths. We were like, no. Like, it sounds too good to be true, but we looked over the statistics, no maternal deaths in the region due to the programs that they've implemented. And what ensures sustainability is that this is a program led by the local community, run by the local community. And because it's getting results, no one wants to go back to the way things used to be before. And as they've seen this, they've then been asking and saying, we also want birthing clinics in our community, and there's become quite a demand. And the future generations, their daughters are not going to die alone at home anymore. That's incredible. You're not helping one woman. You're not helping one boy. You're helping the entire country, the entire world. See. One moment on this particular mountain, we. We meet a lady giving birth. Her baby's head was stuck in the birth canal. And then uh, there was a cord around the neck of the baby. The cord which carries the blood supply to the baby. You know. And if that cord gets compressed, the baby will die uh, during the course of delivery. In this case, it usually calls for an emergency C-section. And here we were in the middle of Nepal. We weren't close to a hospital. Dr. Nast, who worked his magic, he managed to safely deliver this baby. However, when this baby came out, it was this huge shock to us. It was this shock that the cord was wrapped around the baby's neck three times. I remember thinking two things at the same time. One, it was a boy. And two, is he even alive?
He then started to cry and it was these faint little cute cries and we knew this was it, we made it through and it was one of the most precious moments. And to see the joy, her auntie or a relative was with her and when she got the baby in her arms, she was crying and she was so happy that there was another son in the family. The doctor who was there literally said that without the support of the people in that room, that mum and that bub wouldn't have made it. And as I reflect on that moment, I'm thinking it doesn't matter if you are born on the side of a mountain in Nepal or if you're born in a hospital in, in Melbourne, Australia, because every child, every mum deserves that same chance at life. Education is vital and clean water is vital and sanitation and food, it's all vital, but everything starts in pregnancy. And if you look at fetal maternal health and how the health of a woman in pregnancy not only impacts on her child, but her children's children, how an entire community's health can be driven by getting health right during pregnancy, it's definitely the obvious place to put all of your energy. They say it takes a village to raise a child and I believe that this new baby range of Thank You is creating a global village. You know, everyone's saying don't go in, there's huge competitors and they, they, they've got the billion dollar companies, We're like, but that's why Thank You needs to be there. So what we need is mums and dads of Australia to get behind this range because we need to make as much impact as we can. Changing another nappy or having another bath time. But when we combine these seemingly insignificant moments, they equal something remarkable. Because if we can get in, we think this product range, backed by, by just all of us, everyday mums and dads, will literally change the world.